Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Today I want to talk about building Docker images, but not in the way you might be used to doing it. You might be used to using Docker files and scripts that'll build them and pushing them up into different container registries. I'm going to show you something a little different. I found that doing it this way can really help me very easily do things like testing against containers. If you saw my last video, it was about using test containers to be able to do things like integration tests in your testing framework. This isn't limited to testing what I'm going to show you today, but it isn't about creating production systems. I do want to throw a couple quick plugs here. First, like and subscribe always helps and I'd be able to help more and more people. So that's awesome. In addition, I'm going to be doing another workshop on architecture with ASP.NET Core. The workshop is called Pragmatic ASP.NET Core and occurs on November 11th. You'll be able to see a link down in the show notes that will take you to the registration page and be able to see what the course is going to entail. We did this course earlier this year and went really well. So let's get started. So I'm in just in Visual Studio Code to sort of explain the problem. So I might want to create a database that has a bunch of data already built into it. And if I create a Docker file and here, I'm creating it from SQL Server. I could run this and copy these files in there, but the being able to actually run the scripts that are going to restore this as well as execute that SQL is a little problematic because that code isn't being run during the build. We have to actually do it after the build happens. And so what that ends up happening is we get like a quick file that will go ahead and build it based on that Docker file. So here in the run, what we typically have to do is build that Docker image every time we start the process. So every time we want to run this container, we'll assume that we've built the Docker image already, which I'm just showing you in the script is doing. And when we run it, we're actually telling it to execute this as what we built here, but we don't have the database. And so we end up having to execute some SQL commands like restoring the database and going ahead and executing this SQL. And that takes time. And if you do want this to be up and running quickly back and forth, you don't want to have to be doing that, especially the restore database is actually quite expensive. Let's see if there's a better way. I'm in Docker desktop, which I think may help you. And I have a number of images, including this Microsoft server image that I want to add to. And so I'm going to actually just run this. I'm going to set up some settings. So I'm going to call this my pre-building DB as just the container name so I can deal with it later. And I'm going to give it a host port so that I can reach into that container and do stuff. And I'll need a couple of environment variables. And these are defined in the MS SQL container documentation. But the first is accept EULA equals Y. And that's just so that you know you're accepting the user agreement. And the other is MS SQL SA password. Now we could avoid this after we do some of the things. But for now, I'm just going to set the password as a dummy password because this is just for my machine anyway. I'll go ahead and run that. And here it's going to try to execute that server and we can see that it should be running now. Let's look at SQL Server Management Studio. And here, because it's being exposed on my machine, I can just say a local host and that's just the SA for the user and the password. Again, we're not really concerning ourselves as much about security here because these are just going to be ones we use internally or part of our build. And when I open this, I can see there's no databases. There's system databases, but no real databases because this is a blank slate. Let's go ahead and open up a file of a script I have called free billing. And this is a script that'll go ahead and create this entire schema for me. You can see because I have a migrations history here that this actually comes from a script being able to build it from the migrations. And interestingly is I'm also inserting a bunch of data that is part of migration scripts. Now that I have it, I should be able to execute it. None of this should come out of surprise if you ever worked with SQL Server. And by the way, this isn't specific to SQL Server or even databases. This is just a good way for for me to show you how it works. And here we'll go ahead and do a trick. Let's go ahead and create a new query and I'll just say select star from customers. If we execute that, we'll see that we're actually getting data in here of the sample data that I injected. So we have good data here. None of this should be a surprise. If we go back to Docker, we can see we have our free billing DB as a running Docker image. In fact, we can click that. We, we can look at the logs where it showed that it is starting
regarding that database that we created. I can inspect different properties about it, look at where there's binding to volumes, which we don't have in this case, and uh, you can execute commands directly in the VM, but we're more interested in what's in the files. So the files have some data being modified. In fact, if we go down this road, we'll actually see that it's the MS SQL data that's been modified. In fact, these were created that are ultimately going to hold my free billing database and log. And so we want now what's in this container. So let's open up a console and let's go ahead and say Docker commits. And I'll call this my free billing DB and I'll just call it free billing SQL colon latest. Now, what is this commit doing? This commit is saying, oh, this image that's running that has this name, I want you to take what it looks like this second and commit it and create a new image based on it. Instead of having a complex Docker image that tried to execute some of these things to get you in the right state, I'm actually going to create a container from that. And so back here, we can see our new image for free billing SQL, right? Let's go up to our containers and let me stop this. In fact, let's go ahead and kill it because I'm going to want to reuse the name again. And it should be no surprise that if I execute that same query after 30 seconds, it'll go ahead and fail because there's no database there. So let's go back to images and let's go ahead and start this as a new image. We're going to need to do the same things we did before. For free billing DB 1433. So this is still a SQL Server image. It just has additional data in it. And of course, this could all be done at the command line as well. I'm just wanting you to see everything that's involved. MS SQL SA password and my fancy dancy bad password as the password. And now it's started. Have all the pieces here. Now let's execute it again. We can see the data again. So when we started a container with this image, it's in the same state it was when I called commit. Now this free billing latest but this free building SQL latest type, we could push to a repository as well. And if you're doing things like CI and CD builds, you may actually want to do that to pull down that pre-created database, other sorts of servers that you might want that have that consistent state you want in order to execute it. The actual building of the database or restoring it or running a script, all of that is going to be taken out of the time it takes to do that. There are benefits to this process that aren't about testing, but this is the way I've seen it be most beneficial is in using using containers for testing, especially integration tests. So where does that leave us? Hopefully you've gotten a sense of how you can use containers in untraditional ways. I've always thought about containers as how you're going to necessarily hoist your application, how you're going to put it into Azure AWS, and you're going to have to manage what data is in there so it doesn't go away. This is sort of the opposite. This is creating a container that has absolutely a specific known state so that you can do things with that known state in a much quicker way. Bringing up or executing that image is going to be way faster than actually doing that image and data every time. Hope that makes sense. Again, if you want to see more about my architecture workshop, you can see the link down in the show notes. This has been Sean Wildermuth for Coding Shorts. I'll see you next time.